Hello everybody, Max Monty 1516 here, back again with another Thomas Wooden Railway review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new 2022 passenger pickup set. And it's basically just an after station with a few extra pieces. But um, yeah, here we are. So I have this brand new item. I do believe I'm the first person at least documented to have it, as I don't think it's out in anywhere in either Europe or North America. I saw this item go up on Amazon Japan a few days ago, and I instantly bought it, and it of course arrived here. And um, yeah, because I was busy the day this arrived, I wasn't able to film an unboxing video. However, uh, I am going to look at everything in depth, of course, take a look at the item, and uh, also look at the box, which I'm going to do right now. So without further ado, here is the box. and. It's massive. I'm just going to go ahead and take my phone off of the tripod for this uh, portion of the video. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and look at the front of the box here. Of course, there's this really nice stylized drawing of Thomas I really like. It's probably just put through a filter, but again, I think it looks super cool. And then uh, over here, of course, a nice giant depiction of the item and everything included in the box. And it actually just mimics the style of the uh, engine boxes, which I'm a big fan of. So of course, over here, you can see the passenger pickup set. It's written in Japanese because again, I imported this from Japan. I don't even know, I haven't seen an English box yet. So who knows if they're being produced or not yet, but whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, let's go ahead and move over to the top of the box right there. So it's an Apford station in like 20 different languages, which is pretty cool. There's a nice depiction of the track there. And again, you can see they're bringing back clickety-clack track, which I am a, I'm very happy about. Mm. Another uh, depiction right there, a, a better depiction of almost everything you see in the box right there and a child playing with it. If we turn around to the back now, you can see uh, here's a parts list. And again, there's like a few how to play features, which we will get into in a bit. Up here, it says there are 17 pieces in the box. And of course, if you count, there are 17 pieces in the box. And there's the new uh, slogan for the Wooden Railway. And it says, built for memories to last. And uh, yeah, so this, uh, you can see there's adult assembly required down here. It's really not too, uh, it's not too grating or anything. All you have to do is like, basically the canopies here, they are disassembled in the box and you just screw them onto the top. So yeah, there you go. Moving on to the sides of the box, there is a nice logo here, and then you can see that uh, there's everything in Wave 1. Of course, um, some of this hasn't been released in the United States yet. Um, for example, Nia and Rebecca, nor Hero and Kevin. There's the Tidmouth Sheds, which I doubt I'll get, but yeah. And of course, there is our Napford Station. So again, uh, we move it to the other side of the box, and it's just a giant logo. So yeah, uh, the box is pretty cool. I didn't really want to spend too much time on it, but I, um, I'm very impressed with the way these are presented and marketed. For this next section, I'm just going to quickly take a look at the, uh, the other pieces that are involved in this set, starting with the adapters. So of course, um, as you know, in 2018, Wooden Railway was canned, and they switched over to Thomas Wood, which brought in a new track system. And now that Wooden Railway is back, they brought back the old track, so again, they are once again including adapters. However, there is a difference here, and um, they're actually like textured, and I, okay, I just dropped it. But yeah, um, of course, they're still made of plastic, which is to be expected at this point. But uh, honestly, I have no qualms with this. I think it looks pretty cool. It, it's like a brick pathway on there, which I actually quite like. And what's cool is that this set gives you four of them. So yeah, um... Or, as you can see on that layout picture I showed just a second ago, uh, these are quite primarily used as, like, short pieces. If you put them together, they just make, uh, like, a shorter wooden railway piece. So, yeah, uh, there are some adapters. One of the big things that people instantly took a liking to when the pictures for this item were revealed were these brand new exclusive switch tracks. And these, these are really nice. So, um, it's basically one track uh, splitting off into two and it's a parallel switch, which is something we haven't seen before. And I am a big fan of this. This is a really nice looking piece and it's something we should have had in the wooden railway a long time ago, but never really got. 
I guess the closest thing you could do is get a smaller junction piece and then add just a small curve to the side. But this looks a lot more professional. And uh, yeah, about time we got something looking like this. Now, unfortunately, um, these two switches do not have clickety-clack track. I don't know why, but yeah, there's actually like nothing. It's actually quite smooth right there in the rail area. So I guess that's just something to note. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't give these clickety-clack track, but honestly, it's not too big of a deal in my opinion. So now just for a couple of quick track comparisons, right here I have an old uh, six inch piece of track right there. And as you can see, of course, these are the same length just to show you about the size of this piece. And I've also brought in an older switch as well as this small curve here. And of course I put these together. It is the exact same radius pretty much as you can see right there. It pretty much lines up perfectly. The last couple of track pieces, if you can even call them that, uh, I very quickly want to look at. We've got a couple of buffers here and these are pretty cool. I mean, you know, they're buffers, but I mean, they're still nice to have, of course. So these are meant to go on the top portion of the track of Napford. And um, yeah, of course, um, in this new wooden railway line, there are no hills or ascending or descending pieces. There's no way to reach the top of Knapford Station, but of course, if you have older wooden railway tracks, of course you can. And of course, if you're gonna do that, then you can actually take these buffers and then put them like on the ends of Knapford and then make it uh, where there's less track you have to connect. So overall, these buffers have a couple of useful purposes for Knapford here. And again, I mean, they're a nice inclusion. The red color, it matches this truck. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't have much to say. They're just, they're, they're all plastic. Yeah, let's move on. Moving on, I'm next gonna take a quick look at this brand new Knapford cargo car. On the bottom, there is no like code or anything or even a name, but yeah, uh, anyway. Unfortunately, the chassis is plastic here, but honestly, I, I think this looks really nice. And I guess I should mention the entire thing is made of plastic, which I mean, it's a little bit of a letdown, but again, I don't care too much. So yeah, I think the red is like a nice flashy color. It looks pretty cool. And honestly, I'm going to say it, I prefer this to what we had originally. So of course, um, I have an older version right here. This is a standard cargo car that came in like every set known to man. I always thought these were kind of lazy. I've never liked the look of them too much. So now that we're getting something a bit more exclusive with this, I like it quite a lot. And uh, just to show you guys, I think it looks, I think it looks pretty good being pulled behind an engine. It kind of looks like a horse carriage. That was like my first thought. But um, yeah, again, it looks, it looks pretty cool. And it is made to put these little slide pieces in like so. And it can hold up to three of them if I put them in, just like so. So yeah, this is a pretty cool piece. I give, I give it a thumbs up. Now, as I just showed, you're probably wondering what these are. And these uh, are little picture slides, I guess, that come with this station. So I'm gonna take a quick look at each of them. Uh, right here, we have this one where it shows some luggage. And then on the other side, there's more luggage and a little squirrel. This is This is pretty nice. Um, this next one, we have some more luggage and a couple of birds and looks like there's wind or whatever. And then on the other side, it, uh, looks like some either money bags or garbage bags. I'm not entirely sure. And a couple other boxes and stuff like that. And then, uh, next up, we've got a couple of these with passengers inside. So there's this side. Then here's the other side with like a barn in the background. And, uh, over here, there is some more passengers. And over here, there's even more passengers. And this is really cool. I like this stylized little piece of Percy pulling this cargo car. That's that's a really nice touch, actually. And finally, the last little slide here. On one side is a pretty cool-looking Sodor map, actually. I like that a lot. The style is pretty cool. And on the other side is actually like a little self-aware reference. Of course, there's some uh, Thomas references. Uh, if my camera would focus... But uh, yeah, uh, you can see there, this says Knapford, Blue Mountain Quarry. And what's really cool is that there's a little railway series reference right there. Uh, again, if you guys can see that, it says Thomas the Tank Engine 1945 with the original Dolby illustration of Thomas right there. This is super cool. That This is probably my favorite slide for that reason alone. So yeah, anyway, moving on from these slides, 
what are they else meant to go in? Well, they, they go with the cargo car, but they also go with the brand new Annie and Clarabel. Uh, temporarily moving back up to the normal review desk to take a look at Annie and Clarabel. One thing I should mention is that so far, and, and I'm pretty much positive that it's going to stay this way, but Annie and Clarabel are exclusive to the passenger pickup set. And honestly, I think that's a really smart marketing move. I mean, you know, kids want Annie and Clarabel, of course. And then if they want a Napford station, you know, it's like a two in one deal. And honestly, I see no problem with this, really. Especially because they're so tied in to a gimmick of the set, which of course is the slides, which again, we will take another look at in just a second. So anyway, I'm going to take a look at Annie first, right here. Of course, there's a side view, there's her face, the other side, and of course, nothing on the back. And of course, same for Clarabelle, uh, right there you can see. There still are, like, actual windows printed on, which is nice. And again, the printing on this is very nice as well. I think Clarabelle has a really good looking face. That's like, kind of feels more classic to me. And of course, the other side. And yeah, they had the standard rolling stock wheels, which also look pretty cool in my opinion so yeah overall uh annie and clarabelle they look all right of course um they are all plastic which i'm sure some people are gonna really dislike that and honestly these are not the best annie and clarabelle but they're certainly all right i mean i don't really have many problems with them and again real quick i'm going to uh have one of these slides here drops inside like that and then you have some passengers inside annie just like that course you can flip it around and this little uh decal of purse is kind of distracting but if you kind of block it out there i mean yeah the roof kind of blocks it now my one issue with having the slides like these is that they're too tall i mean pretty much everyone has pointed this out on twitter but they look like toasters so um yeah there anyway i i don't really have a an idea why they did this but you know i wish the slides were just shorter and they didn't jut out through the roof that's my only problem but i mean if you just kind of cut it off like that that looks a lot better in my opinion so yeah anyway i mean again not the worst thing in the world but i feel like it looks a little bit weirder when you actually have passengers in these and i'll put one in clarabelle there as well so yeah um of course you can do that but um yeah i mean these these are all right overall i mean i don't really have problems with them that much except for of course what i mentioned about these jutting out and uh real quick i'm gonna go over and do some comparisons to the older annie and clarabelle models for the sake of comparison i'm only going to be using annie for this section because honestly i don't really need to use clarabelle because they're the exact same thing anyway moving on right here we have the 2022 annie versus the 2013 annie so yeah, there's a stark contrast here, and honestly, both of them are fine. I mean, you know, they have different ideas of what they want to be. But overall, I mean, in terms of realism, accuracy, I'm I'm going to go with uh, this Annie right here. Um, yeah, I, overall, I just think the original wooden railway model of Annie kind of gets the job done better, in my opinion. Of course, that's not to say this one is bad, but of course, you know, not all of them can be improvements. So yeah, looking at those, another side view right there, and then I'll do a quick top view like so. I should mention that the new Annie is considerably wider than the old one. We just looked at, in my opinion, the best wooden railway Annie. Now let's look at the worst thing known to man. Yeah, here's the, uh, here's, here's the wood Annie. This existed, this was a thing, and it's terrible. So yeah, um, Honestly, they're both trying to do gimmicks here with, like, uh, having actual passengers inside. And I'm going to be honest, uh, I'm going to give it to the 2022 model in this comparison. Of course, uh, the, old, the wood one is made out of wood, but there's barely any wood on the thing because there's barely any of the coach. The problem is, Wood wanted to introduce these figures. And, of course, uh, basically copying Brio. And you put the figure inside like that, and that looks atrocious, and I hate it, and that's like the worst thing to come out of wood. Wood itself is a nightmare, I hate everything about it. Yeah, this is terrible. Um, and again, what makes it even worse is that, you know, there's there's some paint missing here and there. Uh, yeah, this is, this is really bad. 
so yeah again i'm gonna give it to the 2022 model so yeah uh, in terms of wooden railway versus wood versus wooden railway 2.0 I'm going to give the Wooden Railway 2.0 a second place on this one. There is one more thing that was included inside the box I want to take a quick look at. And there's this little checklist pamphlet infographic thing. I don't know what to call it, but we have uh, this little uh, pamphlet here. I like this a lot. Right there, you can see the same stylized Thomas as well as what I assume says passenger pickup set in Japanese. And then, of course, a picture of the set as well as the logo. Mine was a little bit ripped because this was taped into the box. So I unknowingly pulled it out and ripped a little bit of it, but yeah, uh, not that big of a deal. Anyway, if you open this, there is a little infographic of everything included. And of course there were a little bag of six screws that obviously were for the canopies. And as you can see there, there's a clear like uh, way to put the canopies on and everything. And there's everything included. Uh, the next page, as you can see here, there's a little bit, um, basically there's a place to show like, oh, you put the canopies on here. There's a couple of how to play features and I'm, I'm assuming all of these were the same ones on the box. And then uh, if we go to the next page right there, again, we have everything included, a top view, which is actually pretty nice. I like that a lot and a back view. And that's, that's pretty neat. So uh, we go ahead and move over. We have a little, um, I guess, I guess like a little collection of everything in wave one. Like I mentioned in the box section, um, some of this hasn't made its way to America yet. Uh, there's Nia, Hero, Kevin, and Rebecca up there. And of course I have everyone on this side and Percy right there, which, you've, which you're gonna see in this review. So yeah, anyway. And then the final page right here, we have some other sets and we have the starter set right there with the Thomas. Then there's the Tidmouth Shed set with Percy. There's a track pack down there. And of course, uh, there's a little picture of the box there. And again, there is the layout picture with everything you can make in wave one. So yeah, um, this little infographic thing, it's really nice. I like this a lot and I'm actually gonna keep it because it looks pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. And now for a much more in-depth look at Nafford. Of course, first thing I'll point out here, there are some gates just like the original, or I guess technically original Mattel Nafford station, the one from 2013. There are gates here. Of course, the lights aren't working on like the 2013 model, but honestly, I'm okay with that. It's kind of gimmicky. So yeah, anyway, of course there are gates on all four tracks here, not on the other end, which is fine. And then there is a hazard striped pedestrian walk there. So again, I like the detail. I believe this is more meant to look like the Napford station from the All Engines Go reboot. And another thing I'll mention is that these humans definitely look like uh, they're styled for the reboot uh, from what little of the reboot I've seen and even littler of the reboot people I've seen but yeah this this looks about it so anyway um, one of my biggest things about this Napford one of my favorite things I should say is the playability here and there's actually a lot to do on this version of Napford so basically with the slides here you can take the passengers and you can sit them in the little benches just like that. So I think that's a nice inclusion right there. And of course there are two, so you can put another slide just like that on the other side. And there's also one over there, just like that. So again, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. And there's actually a lot of places to actually hold these slides. So if you're careful with them, you won't, they won't get lost. Anyway, um, if you were to come over here, now let's say we have Annie here and yeah you have like people in her or something basically there's this little elevator here and i'll bring that down and you can take these people or i guess this is more meant to be like for luggage or something you can open this piece up here put your luggage inside just like so and then lift up the elevator like that take your cargo car bring it over here and again there's our buffer in action uh yeah it's a pretty long drop but anyway, take your luggage and then we will put it inside the cargo car. I'll quickly turn the actual station around. And there are some more benches up here where just or thing uh, areas to store these slides. But anyway, uh, you take your luggage over here and then uh, from this side, we put the luggage inside the little cargo drop like so, flick the lever and it comes down just like that. And even then there's a couple of more slots like right there just to store them. 
So yeah, uh, I like the playability aspect of this a lot. It's it's really nice. There's there's actually a lot to do now. Instead of just like previous Napfords, you just drive the engines through. It's a destination. So now there's actually stuff to do, and I think it's more engaging that way. So yeah, good job, Mattel. Um, this is this is an improvement. Now in terms of looks, I don't think it's the best Napford. And again, I will get into comparisons of older Napfords in just a moment. But uh, yeah, just to admire some detail uh, on this wooden piece here, um, this base plate, I guess it's called. Yeah, you got some bushes, like brick path, all the way around. There's just a lot of detail to take in. And even like on the station itself, there's still printing and stuff, even on the top, like there's a lot of detail to admire here. Turning it around from the back, there's a pretty nice view uh, right there, as you can see. I mean, it's very spacious inside the station itself. You can easily get hands in there and then bring your engines through. So yeah, very nice. And again, like I said, with those junctions, there is no clickety-clack track. I do wish there was printing on that wall right there, but you know, it's not the end of the world, it's all right. But uh, yeah, and of course over here, you can see the elevator, another bench. And honestly, I really like this. So yeah, a lot of detail here. It's clear that they're putting a lot of effort into this. And now just to quickly mention a few playability aspects. You can, of course, take this buffer off, and I actually have some classic wooden railway ascending track right here. So, of course, I'll take my riser, put it right there, and, you, of course, uh, sorry about that, but move the tripod. You, you put this right there, and it almost fits. If you wanted to make it flush, it is going to stand up just a little bit, but, I mean, it's it'll still rest there. It's not a big issue. And, of course, put your other ascending piece there. And, uh, yeah, so, of course, uh, it's not perfectly flush like i just said a moment ago but you know it's fine so of course engines will still run on it like normal i take thomas and his cargo car down and of course come back up just like so so yeah this is nice uh, i think it looks all right and it's honestly like pretty cool it'll be cooler to build dynamic layouts with which is a big thing of mine i like doing that and of course these curves are pretty tight however as gordon is showing you there it's nice and flush and even the longest of engines will work quite well on them. And adding on to that last factor, just before I get into some more comparisons, I think the new wooden railway models look really nice in this Napford station. And um, I do have James review coming soon, don't worry about that. And of course, yeah, uh, Napford, it looks even more pleasing when you actually get some engines in there. And of course, I think it'll look really nice in a layout. So now, right here is the ultimate comparison. I have the 2022 Napford Station stacked up against the 2007 Napford Station. So, how do they differ? Well, there's actually quite a few things. So, first of all, uh, in terms of add-ons, over here, of course, there is this cargo drop and the elevator over here, while the 2007 Napford Station has this building right here. And this, of course, is magnetic, which I think is nice. So, if you want to just have the station by itself, that's totally possible. But, honestly, I do think it looks better with the building. And this is like a little microphone where kids could record their own messages or whatever. Mine has long since broken, as I had it for a very long time since I was a child. And I did, of course, color in these tracks right here, which I do regret. But, you know, kids will be kids. Anyway, um, one of the biggest things, like, I noticed when I look at Napford is, like, the big Napford Station logo right here. It's big, it's bold. I really like how this is done. And I think the black helps it stand out a bit more, while you don't really see that as, like, the first thing on Napford over here. So, um, also, there are stickers showing the platform numbers on the older Napford, whereas, um, it is molded here, but the platform numbers are nowhere to be seen. And that's, that's a little lazy, in my opinion. Just a little. And, of course, um, there is printing, really nice printing on the inside of this building. Reminds me of the nice printing, like, around the station itself and everything. Of course, uh, there is no printing right there on that wall, which bothers me a little bit, but I've already touched on that. So yeah, um, honestly, I feel like the Napford station from 2007 is a lot more grand feeling. It feels more like the model series, in my opinion. The canopies are much bigger, and of course, these are removable, which is a pretty big problem that I've had with these. They come off pretty easily, and they get lost, and um, yeah, so I don't really like that too much. I do like, how I mentioned at the start of the review, these are screwed on and they actually come like off of the uh, the station itself. 
and you screw them in by yourself. That's the only really that's the only real assembly required for this napper piece. So yeah, uh, honestly, both of these are solid in my opinion. I think they both look really nice. However, I am going to give it to the 2007 napper. This one is unbeatable in my opinion. It just feels really grand. It looks really nice, and yeah. I, I can't say I'm too big of a fan of this like big wooden slab around the uh, canopies here. I think the canopy should reach farther out and maybe make this unpainted wood piece a bit thinner because again, it looks kind of weird when you're looking at it like that, or at least from this angle. But of course you do have to make room for this track back here. So the canopies have to be a lot shorter. But yeah, honestly, that's really one of my only faults with Napford is just kind of the top in general. Like I said, I wish the canopies were bigger, but again, the uh, elevated track back there is one of my favorite inclusions. That is super cool, and I can't wait to use that in layouts. So yeah, uh, overall, these two Napfords are really good. And before the video ends, uh, I have one more Napford that I want to take a look at. Honestly, I think the 2022 Napford station looks a lot more grandiose when it's compared to something like the wood Napford station. This thing is one of the saddest excuses for any Napford merch I've ever seen. It's so, it's so sad. So, um, in terms of what this comes with, you get exclusive Annie and Clarabelle and a cargo car. Really good deal. This Napford, you get half of an express coach. Yeah, and then like two figures or something, but I didn't even bother bringing those out. There is a platform here, which is cool, I guess. You can have people standing on it. And there's like more of a just person-oriented area. There's stairs and then like a little cafe area. But it's just so small. It's so sad. And honestly, yeah, it's, it's terrible. There's one canopy here. Um, there's, there's one track versus the four that previous Napfers have had. And yeah, it's really, really sad. I, I hate this Napford, it's, it's awful. And even then, like this doesn't come with anything else. It's just this piece, the express coach, and two figures. And then you get this, this behemoth of a destination. I mean, they're calling it a set, which is, I, I think that's kind of fair, but yeah. I mean, you get any Clarabelle, the cargo car, five different little picture slides, and then you throw in the junctions and the adapters. And then you even have like the two buffers up there. This is just so much a better deal in my opinion. And yeah, I will admit this is, this Napford is pretty pricey. So I paid a hundred dollars for this set. Now granted, um, from what was revealed in the middle of 2021, I don't think that the official retail price is going to be a hundred dollars. I think it's 80 or 90. And again, that's not too much of a difference, but you know, still it's, it's um, something to take into consideration. I just wanted to get this thing early. And of course I also had to pay for shipping, which uh, factors into that because of course I imported this from Japan. But like I said, I don't think this is really gonna be a hundred dollars. So if you wanna wait for this thing to reach North America, uh, yeah, be my guest. However, I will link the Amazon uh, I will link the Amazon listing of this Napford below if you guys are interested in getting it. Just be warned, the price is a bit higher than probably what retail will be. Versus this sad little thing, which is like $40. But yeah, honestly, this is a much better deal. And um, if you don't want to try and find one of the old Napfords on eBay or anything like that, and pay ridiculous amounts for a wood railway Napford station, honestly... I would say this is the second best option. It's not the best. There are some definite fundamental flaws, but honestly, overall, I am very, very impressed with this Napford station. Would I recommend it? Yeah, honestly, yeah, I would. For collector's purposes, definitely. But even if you don't have a classic Napford, get this one. It's definitely the next best option. So um, this has been a very long video. It's been a very in-depth review. But I believe that's all I have to say. Thank you all for watching and have a great day. Max Monty 1516, signing out.